now part two uh we're leaving the barn now and uh behind the barn that's where the house and uh the other structures are located at this is uh the uh, the eastern end of the barn in fact that's where the uh the honey hive is located at at the other the other end of it You can see a, a, a small building right there. You can see how thick it is out there. Uh, this was, uh, if I remember right, um, somewhere early summer, late uh, late spring. Um, you really couldn't see more than than uh, 50 feet in front of you. That looking back at the barn on. Uh, so it's a surprisingly large structure. Uh, I would say the house is uh, was originally about half the square footage. Uh, it, it could fit in the footprint of the barn. This is old, uh, I guess, uh, old concrete uh, water trough. Um, there's actually a couple of those on the property. Uh, if I believe, if I if I can remember correctly, uh, there's one. Um, you really can't see it through the woods, but there's one actually um, double that size. Beside the barn, a little bit, but it's pretty hard to hard to see because all the all the thickness out there. Yeah, this little building in front of us. Uh, I'm not quite sure what that was. Uh, I'm assuming being a ranch, uh, there's probably workshops and other uh, uh, utilitarian uh, buildings. I don't think it was uh, any kind of building that held kind of animals or anything. Just the way it looks. Uh, on the inside, there was no no shelving, no uh, chicken wire, no nothing nothing to indicate that animals used to be in here. Uh, it looked like a dirt floor. Um, it could have been a wood floor at once, uh, and over the years. Uh, uh, had rotted out. Uh, you see there, it once had power. Uh, the, the little insulators. So it once had power running to it. Um, I, I was, I would assume it's some kind of workshop. Most of it is uh, corrugated iron. Uh, on the inside is some uh, two by fours and a wooden, a wooden frame holding it up. Um, the frame is pretty much rotted out from the ground up. So the, the two by fours are keeping it, keeping it together. But for the most part, uh, there's really not much holding this uh, little structure together. Now we're looking towards uh, what's left of the house. Um, it's really hard to, you know, I sat there for, for quite a few time and like most of this video, which had a lot of editing to get it out. But a lot of this video was me just trying to figure out the, the house and how, how, how it was situated. Um, there's not many photos of this house. Um, there was original aerial view from uh, historic aerials. And uh, I found another 1950-ish um, photo of the property. Um, unfortunately, the, the, if you zoom in, the resolution of the house isn't great, as you can see here. The house had uh, had two fireplaces, at least at least two ground fireplaces. It may have a fireplace on the second floor because it was two stories high. Uh, it looks like uh, the walls had just collapsed in on itself. Right there was one wall with a window. Uh, that's actually a window laying on the side, a whole wall on the side. I really wish um, I would have got here uh, before before it collapsed. 
Yeah, far, far in. You can see a, still see a fire. I see a chimney still standing. To my uh, to my left, there was another chimney there in the fireplace, but a tree had uh, fell, uh, fell, uh, fell, uh, a tree had fallen over, fell over. I want to call it. And uh, on the way down, it actually drug the fireplace, and the chimney over with it. So the, the fireplace is still there, but the chimney is now uh, strewn across the ground. Yeah, you can see there. That's the uh, the fireplace and the the, the only um, standing standing uh, chimney. I'm not sure if it would have been a fireplace on the second floor. Uh, again, it was really hard to hard to um, uh, mentally reassemble this uh, this house because it's a it's a complete collapse. I knew it was concrete uh, uh, little concrete pillars holding the floors up. It was a I guess what we call a, a pier and beam house. Um, a lot of times they're center blocks, but as old as this house was, it was brick, uh, basically brick columns holding up the uh, first floor off the ground. And then from there, it went from the second floor. Yeah, that was me trying to trying to get to the center of it um, and just look at it and just, just to put, wrap my head around how this house was situated, where the kitchen was, where the living room was, where, where, where were the stairs at. Um, but it, it was just pretty much just a jumbled, a jumbled mess. In fact, what I'm standing on, um, I'm assuming was either the attic floor or maybe the uh, the second floor that had collapsed in. There's another, uh, I guess that's a part of the roof. The roof had a sort of a cedar, cedar shake. Uh, there are some cedar shakes still left. Um, they had a lot of little frilly, uh, I guess, tin metal or, I'm not sure what it's called, but sort of a, uh, a decorative yet useful design. Uh, I, guess they call it, I guess we call it flashing nowadays around the roof and on top of the, on top of the where the peak uh, peaks rise and where the valleys uh, touch each other, there's like a, a uh, Metal flashing, I guess you want to call it. Yeah, that's uh. Whenever you see uh, see that stuff sitting around in the woods, that means there's probably used to be a home site. Sometimes you can find daffodils and other other neat little, little uh, plants out there that are growing wild. That used to be there was one that's planted by the owners. And there you can see some of the some of the cedar shakes. It was uh, sort of hard to date the house. Um, it had window weights, which is a, uh, a little system to use in order to open a window. As you pull up on the window, uh, the window was attached to uh, little ropes and some weights that went down. And so you, there's uh, within the, within the structure, um, I did see a couple couple of window weights sitting around. So I know it had uh, had window weights. That toilet is interesting. Um, I was actually able to date that toilet there uh, to, I believe it was the 1930s uh, design. I had to, had to Google, scour, uh, scour Google to find a photo, of, uh, a, a catalog photo of it. These steps here actually led up to, I believe, was the kitchen. Again, that's the that's the the, the, the only remaining uh, chimney and fireplace. So ironic, also uh, a lot of the old houses in Sugarland are made from that same brick. You see uh, that that brick uh, throughout Sugarland, also. That there was uh, like I think a water pipe or drainage. There's uh, a lot of a lot of old galvanized water piping, and uh, you see some old old gas lines. 
I'm assuming there is a, a septic tank because uh, I'm, I'm sure, pretty sure there was no, uh, yeah, there's old gas line right there. Uh, pretty sure this, there was no uh, city city sewer out there. And I know there used to be a water pump or even a, even a windmill out there. The windmill, of course, is gone. Um, but I'm, there may have been a cistern also somewhere in the vicinity, in, in the vicinity of the house. That's uh, now that's about where the kitchen is. Uh, that's where a lot of the, a lot of the uh, plumbing was coming out of, out of the out of the uh, out of the ground and out of the and out of the, the collapse. A lot of plumbing, both drainage and uh, used to be live water pipes. An old fridge. That's an old stove. And I'm pretty sure a lot of the uh, uh, stove in the fridge probably wasn't the, when the house was built, but it was probably added newer. Uh, later on because that stove is I wouldn't say it's a new design but it's it, it's a lot newer than the house itself is yeah it's an old, old fridge so yeah I'm thinking that was the kitchen area um, again it was yeah I sat there trying to like right there that little uh, brick column right there that's a corner of the house that's one of the corners so I'm really trying to wrap my head around it and also inside, uh, beneath the house in the middle, there's more columns that'll be holding up the flooring. Uh, the house is probably about uh, about two feet, two yeah, about two feet off the ground, which is not not too uncommon. Uh, you go to Liberty and in, in uh, Dayton, Texas, and Hull, and out there you see some old houses that are you know, some are brick, have a little brick support like that, and some have the center block, and some have this old wooden wooden post sticking out of the ground that sometimes send the rot and everything. This was the tree that fell. That took out the other, other fireplace and chimney. I really wish uh, I had more photos of this house and what what it used to look like. Um, all I have is that one photo. Again, uh, uh, that, that's there. That's a P, that's part of the P trap. So that is a, probably a sink, I'm thinking. Um, but yeah, that'd be a, a drain pipe there. That's P, a P-trap that comes off, uh, that would, would attach to the end of that pipe. And right there, it looks like, uh, I think it's either the attic floor again or the second floor that's sitting on top of the first floor. Now there was a, a pretty cool little trash um, trash pile out there. Um, a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of bottles, a lot of just random stuff that was once part of the house that was uh, dumped out there. Now I see there; um, those are some uh, Lone Star Lone Star beer, Lone Star beer bottles. Oh, they were out there by the hundreds. Yeah, I don't know much about uh, the Lone Star uh, Brewing Company. Um, I know it's a, a, a Texas brewery that's been around for a while. Um, but yeah, out there it was whoever who was drinking the bottles liked it a lot because that's about all the beer. Pretty much every beer, every beer bottle out there you see is a Lone Star Brewery. So this is about the uh, the end of part um, part two. Uh, yeah, another bottle. Yeah, another little Lone Star beer bottle. Um, got some peel tab cans. So that's 1970s ish. Um, but yeah, <laughs> you see all the bottles out there. Good grief. So yeah, uh, this is about the end of part two. Uh, part three will be coming up. Thank you.